Hello, Maine Lions. I'm Miss Simonson, and I have a very special story to read to you today. The book is called Mr. Quigley's Keys, and it's written by Barbara Gruner and illustrated by Audrey Williams. He's almost here, I called out cheerfully as soon as I heard the clanging cadence of Mr. Quigley's keys. The sound of those keys was music to our ears because it told us that our fix-it friend was on his way. It totally felt like kindness coming closer as each one of those shiny metal treasures bounced and jostled on his belt. Everybody loved Mr. Quigley. He was our maintenance man. His kind, playful smile and warm, caring eyes could light up a room brighter than any light bulb in his supply closet. He was also a painter, a carpenter, and a can doer. There wasn't anything that Mr. Quigley couldn't do. He adjusted the leaky faucets and tightened wobbly shelves. He oiled up squeaky doors and freshened up weathered walls. He would take care of things before anybody else knew they needed fixing. He even know, knew how to put, help put friends back together when hard things tried to break us apart. As I watched Mr. Quigley paint our keys to connection on the wall, I realized that each one of these 12 traits fit him perfectly. His every move seemed to speak the language of gentleness, goodness, and love. He never needed to say much because how he treated us did the talking for him and I wanted to be just like him when I grew up. I especially loved how he quietly jingled his way through the halls, listening to our hearts and looking for ways to serve. Miss Pittman told us that he chose a life of service when he became a sailor in the Navy long before he started working at our school. That made him a veteran. Mr. Quigley sacrificed a lot during the war to help keep us safe and free. A whole lot. Miss Pittman said it was his war injury that left him deaf. For him, deaf meant that he couldn't hear a single thing. Not even those keys that sang his song with every step. Not being able to hear must have been very difficult for Mr. Quigley, but it sure didn't seem to hold him back. It may have been how he got so good at reading our emotions and understanding what we were going through. Not to fix it for us, just to feel it with us. Miss Pittman said it's called empathy. When we step into someone else's shoes, someone else's story and get curious about how they're feeling and what they might be like, want, or need. His empathy for us was probably why Mr. Quigley worked so hard to make it such a big deal to be the birthday kid. He imagined our excitement at getting a hand-drawn picture of our future selves, so he made a birthday card for each one of us. When Dante heard those keys coming on his big day, he was just sure that he'd look like an astronaut on Mr. Quigley's creation, and he did. At recess that afternoon, Dante announced that he wanted to do something meaningful to thank Mr. Quigley for his creativity and kindness. He wasn't sure what, so he asked me if I knew anything that Mr. Quigley might like. Jen, the quietest friend in our class, overheard us and quickly headed over to where we were playing. Um, his
his birthday is next week, we could call him to our room because something needs fixing, then surprise him by singing the birthday song to him, Jen suggested softly. Dante wondered how Jen knew when Mr. Quigley's birthday was. Then let us know what he did not that he did not think that was a very good idea at all. That won't be much of a treat if, if he won't even be able to hear us, a skeptical Dante insisted. Jen didn't give up. We could sign, but Dante didn't quite get it. You mean make him a birthday sign? Well, we could do that too, Jen responded patiently. But I mean, we can learn some American Sign Language words and use our hands to sign the song. Dante looked at me and shrugged. That sounds hard, doesn't it, Harmony? But before I could answer him, I heard Jen say, I could teach you. We had no idea when or why Jen had learned how to sign, but we both agreed that it would make Mr. Quigley very happy. So when we got back inside, we begged Miss Pittman to let Jen teach us. Miss Pittman, who told us more than once that Mr. Quigley reminded her of her own dad, was eager to learn too. So our lessons when, with Jen started right away. Dante was right. Learning the signs was challenging and it went super slow at first. But we were can-doers, just like Mr. Quigley, so we kept practicing all week long. The more comfortable we became, the more confident we felt connecting through his language. Not to fix it for him, just to feel it with him. When I noticed that Miss Pittman had tears of joy in her eyes, I knew we were ready. And that brings us back to the beginning of this book. He's almost here, I called out cheerfully as soon as I heard the clanging cadence of Mr. Quigley's keys. As our hero handyman entered the room, wondering what could possibly need repair, his eyes fixed instead on our smiles and our hands as we signed our surprise. And when he knelt down to thank us face to face and heart to heart, we didn't need to hear a single word. We could all feel the quiet echo of his gratitude and love. especially his sweet granddaughter, Jen, who would forever help others hear his keys in their hearts. And this book is based on a real gentleman. I hope you enjoyed the story. The book again is Mr. Quigley's Keys.